Okay, so time for some assorted problems. And by this point, we've learned about summation notation, sequences, say arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, and series, okay? But I wanted to do some assorted problems that I hadn't covered in the other videos. Okay, so no new concepts here, but the problems may look a little bit different and the thinking might be a little bit different. So first of all, well, let me remind you about this. Uh, when we see something like that, that's called summation notation. That symbol there that looks like an E is called summation notation. And the way that we do this is with respect to this formula, see that formula has a variable I in it? We start by putting one for I, and then we go to two, and then we go to three, and we stop there at three. So we start here, we count our way up to that, putting all those numbers into this formula and adding them all together. So you see what I have here? If I put one into this, it looks like negative eight plus six. If I put two into this, it looks like, what's eight times two? Well, negative 16 plus six. And then if I put three in, I get negative 24 plus six. Okay, and then I'm adding all those individual results together. I put one in, I put two in, I put three in, I get these individual numbers and I add them together. That's why it's called summation notation. Summation meaning sum, meaning add together. All right, that turns out to be negative two plus negative 10 plus negative 18, which is grand total of negative 30. Okay, so I wanna start the video off with that one just to get our thinking in the right direction to do something like this. Can we work backwards? I think going forwards is pretty easy, right? If I give you this, and I say, can you work that out for me and tell me what you get? Well, you put the numbers in, you do the math, you add them together, and you get an answer, okay? But what if I gave you like the answer and ask you to work back to this original formula? Well, when we learn to do math, we need to learn to see patterns and uh, break codes and things like that. So that's what this is like. So there's this series that's one fourth plus two fifths plus three over six plus plus, it keeps going and we're not told what every single term is, but perhaps we can pick up on a pattern. And then the very last term is given to be 16 over 16 plus three. What is the formula that would produce all this? Where do you start and where do you end to get exactly what you see there, okay? Well, so I think something like this might take a little bit of trial and error. Uh, who knows, maybe you can get it correct the first time, you know, it's possible, but I'm going to assume that you might need a little trial and error, so you say, maybe I'll do like this, uh, see, that's a 1 and that's a 4, what if I started like at 1, and I did something like n over 4n, would that do it, would that get me all this, well, let's check and see, so, when you put 1 in here, all right, you get 1 over 4 times 1. So I did get the, the first term. I got it right. Now, where do you go from 1? You go to 2 and 3 and 4. Okay, so what if I put 2 in? What am I going to get? 2 over 8. Well, that's not 2 over 5. Okay, so... I tried this. It seemed like it might be right. Maybe you try something similar to this. But if you start calculating the numbers, it doesn't match up. Okay. All right. So that one's no good. So let's try to, to notice something else about this. I notice like if in these fractions, the top number, 1, goes to 2 and then 3. And then the bottom number, 4, goes to 5 and then 6. So maybe I should try to create the formula based on that. All right, so here's here's my second attempt at it. Uh, let's, do, let's do this. Let's say n over n plus 3. Here's why I want to do that. That number on the bottom is 3 more than the number on the top. Plus, as I continue to count upwards, this number 
will advance by one every time, and so will this one. So let me show you. So let's start at one. And let's see, what does it give me for the first term? Put one for n. I'll get one over four. Okay. All right, where do we go from one? We just count our way up. So now we do two. What are you going to get? Two over, what's two plus three? Five. You see how it's getting it right? Okay, let's do one more. So n is 1, n is 2, 3, 3 over 6. So yes, I'm getting it right. I set this up so that it would get me this number being 3 more than that. I start at 1, and then by nature of this, I go to 2 and 3, and by nature of that, I go to 4, 5, and 6. So it does what I wanted it to do. So I know where I start. I start at 1. I know the formula, okay? Where do I end? Well, there's the last term. Well, where would you have to stop for this to give you that last term? I mean, it looks like it'd have to be 16, right? So what is, say you kept going, all right? And we won't write every single number, but say you kept going, eventually you get to 16 and you'd be done. You're gonna get 16 over 16 plus three. It's gonna get you that last term, okay? All right, so it works. I tried something, I checked it, I saw that it wasn't right. I reformulated it, I checked it, and I see that this formula with that beginning and end creates that sequence. Okay, so that's what I was after. Okay, It's a little more awkward to start with this and figure that out, but you can do it. You can go both ways. All right, so let's try another one that is a little bit different. Suppose that we had just, say, a problem like this. Okay, take this, and you know how to do summations by now. Put two in, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then work all the way up to 150. What's the grand total gonna be? Okay, so in other words, here's what it's gonna look like. If I put two in, what is seven times two? So we start at two, right? See that two right there? So we start at two. What's seven times two? That's 14 plus two, 15, 16. And then I go to three. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 2 is 23. Okay, so I wrote out some terms there. I put 2 in, I put 3, I put 4, I put 5, and you could keep going. And what's that very last number? Where do you stop? It's 150. So this very last term is 7 times 150 plus 2. Okay, so that's what it looks like. This is the first term. This is not term 150, it's actually term 149. If I started at one, that would be the 150th term, but I'm starting at two. So that makes it the 149th term, okay? Now, once we have this all in front of us, it's an arithmetic series. So that's something I talked about in another video, but what is it? An arithmetic series is such that if you take any term there's this certain number that you add to that term to get the next term. So look at this. If I take any term of this series and I add seven, I'll get the next term. 16 plus seven is 23. 23 plus seven is 30. 30 plus seven is 37. So you get the idea? It's arithmetic. It follows that pattern. D is seven. D is the number we add to any term to get the next term. First term is 16. Term 149 is 1,052. There are 149 terms there if I wrote them all out. I did not write them all out, but if I did, that's how many there would be. Okay? Now, how are we going to find that grand total? Well, I guess there's two ways to do it. I don't want you to do it this way, but you could. All right, so on your test, don't do it like this. But I could just, by brute force, add them together. It'd take me a while. I'd have to press that plus button quite a bit, but I could do it that, that way. I'm just asking, what do you get when you add all this together, okay? Now, I think that that's a little too much to do by hand. 
So I'll remind you of a formula that I gave in another video. The sum of n terms of an arithmetic series is this, n over 2 times the first term plus the nth term. So if I want, let's see, how many terms are we adding together right there? I made the case to you that there's 149 terms. So I want to find the sum of the first n terms being 149 terms. So I'll do like this. What's the first term? Uh, 16. What's the 149th term? 1052. Okay, and that will be our grand total. All right, so what's that? 149 over 2. So I'll get that to be 74.5, and then I'll multiply that by 16 plus 1052. See? And then so I get 79,566. All right. So let's, in fact, write that up here. 79,566. So if you took 16 plus 23 plus 30 plus 37 and you kept adding like that, and there are going to be a lot of numbers there, there's going to be 149 total, that would be the grand total. If you did it the long way, that's what you'd get, okay? So on your test, on your quiz, don't do it the long way though. I just tell you that so you have some insight into that number. Use the formula. It's the shortcut. It's very easy to add lots of those numbers together with just this one calculation.